Hello, my name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'll be discussing my project to do mushrooms classification via deep learning. So to quickly review the problem statement, uh, mushrooms are used extensively in cooking, and they're also the subject of extensive research uh, for basic science and for potential pharmacological uses. So identifying mushrooms in the wild is difficult, <clears throat> and it requires extensive experience for a person to learn to do it successfully. So this project will explore using deep learning to classify labeled pictures of, of mushrooms. So these data were collected and labeled by the Mycologist Society in Northern Europe, and they were posted publicly on Kaggle for this purpose. So models will be developed using the Python Keras API as a wrapper for TensorFlow. And this project will compare the use of a model trained only on the sample data versus a pre-trained data that's been fine-tuned according to this data. So I made a list here of my sources, uh, some publicly available blogs that I took starter code from and I took many ideas from. Um, and this was the system setup that I used. So I did most of the training on, on a medium-sized Amazon uh, P2.x large system. Uh, in terms of current generation systems, this is now medium. Uh, so 1K80 GPU, 4V CPU, and 60 gigs of RAM. Uh, I also did work on my MacBook. Uh, not a lot of software that's required for this, so Python 3.6, TensorFlow, Keras, and then the Python imaging library um, with links to all of these here. So the data is close to 7,000 examples of wild mushrooms. Again, these were labeled by the Northern European Mycologist Society. And these are all common varieties that you would find in Northern Europe. <clears throat> uh, so the zip file expands and looks like this. What you'll want to do to make the code work with the notebooks um, is expire is just expand the data into a data directory and when we take a look at what this data looks like um, these mushrooms right they're in folders so these are examples of the agaricus basically these mushrooms have been collected in the field um, and they're essentially posed in ways that show um, everything that there is to be shown about this particular mushroom so we look here at three examples of the agaricus mushroom If we go down to Cortinarius, right, we've got something that looks quite a bit different. Uh, but basically, these are all fungi. We're looking at these fungi as posed, so the different parts of them are exposed. Uh, we're going to see if we can teach a computer to recognize these. Uh, the only problem that I ran into, so there's not a lot of pre-processing required on the data. I'll talk about how I did the image data generators. Uh, some of the images were truncated cause them to fail on loading. Um, so the one thing that I had to do to make that work uh, was to <clears throat> change this uh, Python image library option to be able to load truncated images. Um, and then let's drill into what's going on with model one. So the first model, right, we're going to do training just against this data set. Uh, so up top we cover the imports, right, we're doing sys and we're doing uh, basic carrot stuff. We're doing matplotlib that we'll, we'll use later uh, to show our results. Uh, we're setting some of the parameters up front, uh, basically just to make this a little easier to iterate through the model, right? We can change these numbers and not have to change the code later on. And then we've got the data path, so we've expanded that zip file into a data directory. The training is done um, <clears throat> using the Python data generators, Keras data generators. So the image data generators, basically, we're rescaling this image. Um, we're applying shear, we're applying zim, zoom, and we're applying horizontal flip to be able to uh, augment these images. So what the image data generator, when we turn it into the data gen, and the train generator, and the validation generator, and the chain train generator, it's actually going to generate more images than it had previously. And by applying shear and zoom and some horizontal flip, it basically modifies those images enough that they look different. Um, and this gives us the appearance of having more data than we have, and we can actually do deeper training on the model than if we didn't do augmentation. Um, so there's a train generator that's taking data out of this directory, um, and it's using categorical to get the categories off of the directories. Uh, same thing with the validation generator. So the validation data um, is just coming from this salad, uh, validation subset that does the validation split. <clears throat> now, some of my results came out a little bit skewed. I'll cover that at the end. 
I believe that's because the validation split is actually augmenting the data, even though it actually should not be doing that for the validation data. I still have some further investigation to do. I'm not sure of that, but I, I think that's the source of, of an actual problem. I think that's a bug in the current version of the data generator. So when we build the model, um, we build it as sequential, right? We add some convolutional layers, some max pooling layers. Um, <clears throat> we're basically doing dropout for regularization. Um, and then this dense layer at the end is what's going to classify it. So classify it according to the nine classes um, with soft, soft max. Right, and the loss factor, because we have multiple categories, is we're using categorical cross-entropy. Um, and the primary metric is going to be accuracy. Uh, so taking a look at the model summary here. And then we're going to fit the model. right? Because we're using the generators, we're going to use the model fit generator. Um, and we're going to apply that to history so that we get the output and we can come back and look at the statistics later. Uh, so these epics are taking about two minutes each to train. Um, and we're doing 50 of them. And when we graph the results, what we see is we can get up to about 60% uh, accuracy on the training data. The one thing that's suspicious about these results is we're actually seeing higher accuracy on validation. And we're seeing lower loss on validation, <clears throat> uh, which is the opposite of what we would expect. We would obviously expect to see... Uh, lower accuracy, higher loss on the validation data that the model hasn't seen before, the data that we held out. Um, so again, I believe that that's a bug in the way that the data generator works, um, but I need some further testing to determine that. Um, I believe that's a bug because I didn't see that in earlier versions where I was actually splitting out the da data manually for training, um, and also because it doesn't show up in the second model. When we drill into the second model, um, we're doing similar imports, right? So uh, I'm actually not using Numpy or Pandas here, but um, I've got them there. Uh, but we're importing Keras. Then um, we're also importing Matplotlib down here. Uh, we've got our parameters set in the beginning again so that we can modify the model simpler by just changing parameters in, in one spot as we're iterating through the model. And what we're doing here is we're starting with the VGG19 model. Um, so this was chained on the ImageNet database. So a publicly available database of over a million images with a thousand categories. Um, and basically what it's been trained to do is break images into categories. So at a low level, it knows how to extract features from images um, and basically how to discriminate different images against each other. So we're not going to include the top part where it actually does the classification, but we're, the, what this is going to do is it's going to include the base part that was trained on ImageNet to be able to just recognize how to classify images. And then we're going to add up on top of that. Uh, we've got some regularization. We did this in the form of batch normalization on this one. Um, and we're, then we're using two dense layers um, before we again come to the predictions layer. And the predictions layer, again, is using softmax to um, differentiate between things. So then we do the model fine-tuned uh, where we tie those models together. And this is our model summary. So we can see that this is a much deeper model that doesn't fit on one screen um, than we were looking at previously. And we're taking advantage of the fact that you know this model was trained against a very large database using state-of-the-art, uh, very, very powerful hardware over a period of, of a couple of weeks. Um, so a lot of time spent training this model, and we get all the goodness of that, right? And then we're just training these last few layers against our actual data set for the task at hand. So again, we're using categorical cross-entropy as our loss function. We're using accuracy as our primary metric. Um, and we're using essentially the same data generator, although this time we're not doing any image augmentation. So we're just doing a validation split and bringing the data in. Um, and then the validation generator right, is bringing it in from the subset there. And then same thing, we've got the uh, fit generator applied to history. And we can see the models training much, much faster. So we're only going to run 30 epics. Each epic is running in, you know, once it gets going under 20 seconds. Um, and you can see that this converges very, very quickly when we graph the results, right? So we're up above 99% accuracy after, uh, you know, about the 11th epic. Um, and the validation loss is dropping uh, very, very quickly as well. Um, so by using this pre-trained model, 
we're able to very, very quickly get uh, to a superior result than we could get just building a deep learning model on the data itself. Uh, so in summary, this problem is an example of one where expert knowledge is required to solve a real-world problem. So people who can consistently and cons confidently identify mushrooms in the field are pretty rare, and they require a lot of experience to develop that knowledge base. Um, we also know the deep learning models require a large amount of data. Right? We have hundreds or thousands of samples per category, but that's not a large amount of data to be training on 7,000 images. Um, so we weren't able to effectively train a model just looking at these images. So then we went to VGG19, um, and we extended that. And based on the base of VGG19, layering on some localized training for mushrooms, uh, we were able to get a model that could very accurately recognize these images um, and do it very, very quickly. Uh, so this essentially serves as a proof of concept that there are other processes that this could be applied to, right, where we have expert knowledge that we want to disseminate, um, and we want to potentially use that for training, or we want to potentially use that for inference. So thank you very much for your time.